Hello, so if you remember in the last video, uh, we talked about the different sort of levels to the questions which we could have. So we didn't just have to have question one, question two, question three, etc. We could also have part A and part B, or part one and part two. And we talked about the different levels which we could create within that. Now, I guess this video is, or this series of videos, are all about how we can customize this exam document to look exactly how we want it to. So if you have a look, if I zoom in, at the moment, question numbers, so one, two, three, and also the part numbers, so A and B, and also the subparts, one and two, they're all the same faced font as the rest of the question. I wanna customize those. I wanna make them stand out a little bit more, and perhaps I wanna change some certain features. So the way to do that is to come up to the preamble. Now, preamble in LaTeX is anything before you start the document. So you notice here that I've got begin document that basically says anything below this point, I've begun the document, I want you to compile. Okay, uh, anything before that is preamble. So the document class, which is exam, and the packages which I install, this is all preamble. So in fact, to make this stand out a little bit more, I'm just gonna put a load of space in between the begin document and the preamble. So, okay, uh, let's think about what we could do to these questions then, That's the way which the question numbers and parts appear. So first things first, I think I wanna change the question numbers, so question number one, two, three, etc. I wanna change them to be bold. OK, so in order for this to work, I need to renew a command, because if you remember, the way which I got a question um, set up is I use the command question. Similarly, if I wanted to create a part, I'd use the command part and uh, the same for sub part as well. That's also a command. So because these are existing commands within the exam document class, I need to in, or in order to change them, I need to renew them. OK, because they're existing commands, so I need to renew them. I need to redefine them. So there's a command for that. It's called renew command. And this accepts two inputs. So I'm going to open and close two sets of curly brackets. The first set of curly brackets are the command which is already existing. So let's just change, first of all, questions. So question one, question two, question three. OK, so I'm going to put, first of all, question label. OK, so I'm going to change the question label. Right. So that's what I put in my first set of curly brackets. Second set of curly brackets is how I actually change that question label, okay? So I wanna make this bold. So the simple way to make this bold is either to type text BF and then open and close curly brackets within the already existing set of curly brackets. So maybe if I put a bit of space in there as well, um, you'll be able to see that within the set of curly brackets where I'm redefining stuff, I have another set of curly brackets which corresponds to text BF, okay? And essentially anything that appears inside the uh, curly brackets next to text BF will be made boldface text font, okay? So, uh, okay, well, I wanna make the question part, okay? So I'm just gonna do the question here. Inside the text BF, I'm gonna put the question, and now if I recompile, you can see that one and two and three, etc., all changes to be bold, okay? So that's nice. But you notice as well that it loses the dot, and I actually quite like the dot. The reason being is because I've redefined the command and I haven't told LaTeX to keep the dot there. So a very simple change where it says uh, next to the question, I can just put a dot there. And if I now recompile, it will basically put the dot back, okay? But if I didn't want a dot, if I wanted, for example, a bracket, I could really easily just put a bracket there. Oops. Could really easily change that dot for a bracket. And you can see I changed that to a bracket again. But I quite like the dot, so I'm gonna keep it as a dot there. But you can fiddle around and see how you want to uh, change things there. OK, so I guess the next thing we need to change are the parts, the part A and the part B. So very simple, just do a similar kind of thing. So renew command, open and close two sets of curly brackets. The first one is going to be called the part label. OK, so I'm going to go part label. So that's what I want to redefine. You notice I'm still putting my backslash in front of that. Then I come over to the second set of curly brackets. Still want it to be bold. So actually another way to get bold up, you can type text BF, but a quicker way is just to go control B and then it'll bring up that command automatically for you. Because I guess it's a command that you use quite a lot. Also, that also works in Microsoft Word, by the way. Okay. So again, within that set of curly brackets where it says text BF, I'm gonna change this to be the part number. Okay. And if I change this to be the part number, notice that A and B will change to be bold face font. Now you notice as well, because I've redefined it, same problem with the question which we had, uh, it's also got rid of those brackets. I didn't actually like the bracket at the start, but I like the bracket afterwards. So I'm gonna put that back. So very simply where it says the part number, I'm just gonna put a bracket afterwards, and then you can see that it brings the bracket back after A and B, okay? 
And then finally, I'm just gonna change part one and part two to also be bold. So I'm gonna go renew, command, and open and close two sets of curly brackets. The first one, if I'm doing uh, subparts, will be subpart label. And the second one, again, I want this to be bold, so I'm gonna go control B for bold. And inside that curly bracket, you see my cursor is automatically there, which is quite nice. I'm just gonna put the subpart. And if I now click recompile, you can see that parts one and two have now changed to be bold as well, which is really nice. Now actually, because I just wanna differentiate this a little bit more, uh, I'm gonna use a dot after the question number, so question number one, two, three. I'm gonna use a bracket after part A and part B. So for Roman numerals, I think I'm gonna put a bracket at the start and at the finish as well. So I just come back over here, where it says the subparts, just put a bracket at the start and a bracket at the end. Click recompile and you can see that part one and part two will change to have a bracket at the start and at the end there as well, okay? So you can fiddle around and you can sort of change this. For example, if you want it to be italics, you could go text IT instead of text BF. So if I change this to be text IT, then you can see that one and two basically changes to be italics instead, okay? But I actually prefer it to be bold. So you can have a fiddle around and see what you like and what you uh, prefer. Now, one final thing which I want to change, or I'll show you how to change, but may not necessarily be appropriate for everyone. You see how at the moment I've got parts defined as A and B and C. So in other words, alpha, um, uh, in other words, um, letters, okay, so A and B. And I've got subparts defined as Roman numerals, so one, two, three, okay. What if I want to swap those over? Okay, I'll show you that you can do it. May not be an issue for you, but I'll show you how you can do it just in case you wanted to. So I'm gonna come up here, okay, before I've redefined all of my question labels and part labels and subpart labels, etc. And again, I'm gonna renew my command. So I'm gonna go renew command, okay? And I'm gonna use two sets of curly brackets again. Okay, so let's first of all change A and B to be Roman numerals, okay? So one and two. So I'm just gonna simply go the part number in my first one, okay, so that's A and B. And I'm gonna change this to be Roman numerals. So I'm gonna type backslash Roman, and then in uh, another set of curly brackets, I'm gonna put the part number, okay? So the Roman numerals corresponding to the part number. Now, if I recompile, notice how A and B will change now to be one and two, okay? And you notice it takes on the same formatting as before. So in other words, with the bracket afterwards, same with A and B, okay? If I wanna change this down here, so if I wanna change one and two to be A and B, I can really easily do that. So renew command, okay? And this time I'm gonna put the subpart, the subpart in my first set of curly brackets. My second set of curly brackets, I wanna change, at the moment, subpart is in Roman numerals, I wanna change that to be um, alpha, uh, alphabetical, okay? It's part of the alphabet, okay? So I'm gonna go ALF, so backslash ALF. Important to put ALF and not alpha, Alpha is the mathematical symbol. Alpha means alphabet. And again, I'm gonna put curly brackets and I wanna tell it to put the subpart. So I'm gonna type subpart in there. Now, if I recompile it, notice how one and two will change to be A and B, okay? So if you wanted to swap those two things over, I've just shown you that you can. You can also do the same with the question, but you can go away and look how to do that yourself, okay? So hopefully that helps.